Hello everybody, hope you're well. I'm going to make a massive presumption now and say that you, the viewer, fall into two categories. Either the first one, this video has popped up on your feed and you've pressed it and you're watching it, if so, thank you. But you need to know that this video is a direct follow-on from this video, the link of which is in the description. And you might want to go and watch that first for a bit of context, that's not a lot of this is going to make sense to you. Or you're in the second camp, which is you have already watched that video and you want to see what happens. So let's crack on with that one. When I first went to see the job in the previous video, um, I ran my pointing trowel across the joints and it just fell out disintegrated. I thought, what's going wrong there? The, the, the mortar must have failed. Um, the whole lot must have gone, blah, blah, blah. So I turned up, made a video on it, thinking it's just going to be pick up the bricks, scrape them off as you used to do at, at college, um, and then... We'll, we'll go from there and we'll try and work out what went wrong. And the question of, well, if the, if the mortar has gone, for why? Is it is it a failing with the cement? If it is, who does pay for that? Do, do you ask them for meat halfway? You know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I think you saw from the previous video that uh, as the day progressed, um, it became apparent that there was something bigger going on or a bigger mistake had been made and I think about halfway through the video I sort of zoomed out and I saw it for exactly what it was so to answer the question of uh, who who's, whose fault is it who does pay for it it's solely it's on me um, best practices weren't put into practice and uh, it's, it's completely my mistake so it's not what happens in life, is it? It's how you deal with it. Um, if you build a wall for somebody, it should last. Let's face facts. You know, bricks and mortar are as near as a permanent solution to something as you can probably get in the building industry. So um, four years is, is nowhere near enough. And it's only when I actually looked at it, I thought, oh, Christ, yeah. It's obvious now, isn't it? All the clues were there. So I made a mistake and we're going to put go back and we're going to pull it right. So... That's that. Let's put that one to bed. But what also happened from that video is that the comment section, something like 1100 at the time of recording this, uh, became quite a fascinating, for me, forum of uh, do's and don'ts. And there were some great learning points in there. And there was also a wide range of theories as to why it went wrong. Now, the interesting part of that is that you all can't be right at the same time, you can't all be wrong. So who is right and who is wrong? What did actually fail and why did it fail? Which I find very, very interesting. Um, so we're going to go round about now, so to speak. Uh, we're going to show you what I've done and we're going to talk about why I can't put the best practices into place on, in one aspect of it. Um, that's not to say I that's not why I did it in the first place. Um, that isn't in question. Um, I didn't because it just didn't occur to me at the time when, and where it should have, which is the important part. Uh, but with all fresh eyes now thinking about this, lay the land right, how do we do this properly? You can't here. So it's going to need a different kind of solution for it and we're going to talk about that. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go around. We'll show you what we've done, why I've done it, and then we'll go from there. Right then, before I show you what I've done, just note that it's a lovely, bright, clear day. And you'll see just how shady the back of this garden is. So, how have we built it? What have we done? We have built, getting the exactly same bricks as before. <laughs> but calm down, calm down, there's a reason. There's a reason, and we're gonna go into it. Breathe. Breathe, relax your thumbs, relax your thumbs, here we go. So what's the issue here then? Well, it's water management, isn't it? Simple as that. I don't think it's cement. I've completely discounted that. I don't think it's a bad batch of cement. It's the fact that the water is hitting this area from various directions and, there's, and I give it nowhere to go. These weep holes there are as inadequate as you can get. They might as well not be there for the issues that we're having. Now the biggest indication for me should have been, yes, we're at the bottom of the hill, but also how far this wall is leaning over. And if I can just show you, that's plump. And 
That is how far it's out. That's how far it's been pushed out. Pushed out simply by the rain coming down the hill and hitting this wall. There. And the whole thing that is. And that's about 40 metres long. No expansion joints. No weep holes in it. It's a testament to the bricks though. Because they haven't cracked. Well the joints I mean. The joints haven't cracked. Or anything. It's just leaning over. All, all as one. Straight the way down. So that was my biggest telltale sign. Now the issue that that gives us is, well, you just put a land drain, and I completely agree with what you're saying for the people who are saying that you need to put the, the water needs to go somewhere, there needs to be a French drain or a land drain behind this wall. I can't. That's the issue. Because if I was to take this wall down in its entirety, everything, including the retaining wall behind it, don't forget these bricks aren't retaining anything. A lot of you are saying that the, the wrong bricks have been used. That's as maybe. But with correct water management, I think these bits can still be used. I'm not going to use them, nor will I use um, F1s for garden walls again, because of this experience alone. But if with proper copings, with a proper drip edge underneath, which I've put on these now, um, I can't see why you shouldn't be able to. But I'm not obviously I'm not, I'm not going to because of this. But I I don't necessarily think that it's um, an absolute no-no to use these bricks. However, let's, let's stick to this. Taking these down, if I was to excavate behind that wall to put any kind of uh, drain in at all, I'm undermining this fence. And that, it just can't happen. It's too high, it's too up in the ground, up, up, up in the sky. I can't, um, I can't do that. In fact, if you look here, you see that concrete there? I'll try and get some better footage on from before. Now, that is the concrete that's surrounding that this post. That's how close we are. We're literally on the boundary. So in terms of doing what you should do, drainage behind here, I can't. Not without taking all this down or running a risk of it falling down, one of the two. So that's not something that I can do. I can, however, put something behind that wall. That wall's just got the decking behind it. Now, in terms of the rain coming down uh, on top of that decking, that's obviously doing nothing from stopping it getting to the ground, nor should it. That's not what it's there for, obviously. So, in terms of that wall, I can put something behind that, or, or I can at least try and tank it. A lot of you are saying, a lot of you are saying, put a membrane behind it. Again, I don't like that idea because I don't want to stop the water. The water's got to go somewhere. You can't just membrane it and walk away. That water is just going to hit the back of that and then it's going to cause a whole load of problems. Evident by what's happening here. The water is just coming down, it's hitting that, it's got nowhere else to go and it's just pushing, pushing, pushing and eventually we've got a few storms as, as well as on this fence as well. You know, that hasn't got too much, too much long left in it, I don't think. So. I don't think a membrane is necessarily, in this case, the right thing to do. Simply because, and I'll say it again, the water has to go somewhere. You can't just stop it and protect your block work and keep your block work dry. That's not the point. It has to move and has to get it out. And we can't do that here. There, we can. I can put something and we can take it out that way around there. Uh, but on this way, we can't. So my proposal is that next summer and only in the summer and only because of this fence look I mean look at trees now it's breezy now if I was to take that down now as nice and as dry as it is gust of wind on that thing boom it's gone whole world of hers um, and then we are in an insurance job and it's not what we want so in the summer when we get that week and we always get one three or four days where it's just going to be lovely and bone dry I'll drop all tools from the job that, we're, that we'll be on at the time. I'll make, I'll make it clear with the customer as soon as we start the job that that's what we're going to do. And we'll get round here, take it down and build the entire thing in engineering bricks with adequate weep holes. Um, get them down on the floor, um, throughout, all the way up. And we'll make that look just a thick, just a barrier, just a big chunk of something just to, that they can take that water and also let it out with some um, 
water management behind that one. Water management with this one is going to have to be in the wall. That's all we can do with that. But that, I think, is the key here. I haven't gone to that wall um, again. This has only gone the last eight months and it's all coming out. So I haven't been bothered being too fancy here. It was all about making it look good for the customer over Christmas and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. However, all that being said, I don't think that's what ruined the mortar and the front wall between the bricks. It's a water management issue, but I don't think that water was coming back and causing an issue. I think, quite simply, it's the copings, and I'll show you now why I think that. These copings aren't copings, are they? They're just slabs, porous slabs. And at the time, they didn't have a drip edge on the bottom of them, which is extremely important. Can't believe I didn't put one in at the time, but I didn't. And I'll show you the importance of that now. No drip. Rains. Water tracks down the front face and the underside, straight down the face of the brickwork. In the winter, that freezes. Over here. Drip groove, rains, and there we go. See that? Barely touches the wall. So there we go, that's my diagnosis. It wasn't the water coming from the back, or that it does need to be managed as and when we redo it. But it's all to do with the face water. It's the perfect storm of inadequate materials, supplied and designed by me, so it's all my issue. With the fact that this part of the garden gets zero sun at all. And it's midday now. And it's a lovely, lovely blue sky. And we're getting nothing. So it's a right damp spot here. So when this freezes, it proper gets it. And it will get it all day. And obviously at night it will do it again. And that's the issue. So that's where I've gone wrong, I think. It wasn't the water from behind, it's purely inadequate materials. Saying that, I don't think these bricks are an industry no-no for retaining walls. This environment, yes, granted, but the house, as you can see, is fine. Now, it's got a lot of overhang, it's got a lot of protection, granted. But bricks are allowed to get wet, providing that they've got room to, to breathe and to dry out and these haven't so I won't be using them again obviously one spitting and all that but I don't necessarily believe that they're an absolute no-no in the right conditions I think you can use them for retaining walls bear in mind that this isn't a retaining wall yes if it was nine inch thick and it literally was retaining the ground behind it I get it that's fine this isn't, this is just cladding, effectively. That's all that is. So, I don't think it is the water coming down. The hill is coming down from the sky, and that's our issue. So that is my diagnosis. So I'm gonna clean up now, get the chairs back, and then we'll have a quick chat about other things. And you can be on your way. So before we go, I'll just show you a quick trick it's an old bit brick lace trick. This was I was uh, showing it many many years ago. If there's little bits in walls that you don't like, I know there's a couple of chip bricks around here. That's they have to go back in because that's all I had. But it's all going to get redone next year anyway. Uh, if there's little bits like that that you don't like, this is a what you can do in order just to just to toss it up. Just a little nice little finishing touch. You put something in front of it. Excellent. Oh, and for those of you who are still tired about the patio. I haven't at all. I should have put some down. No excuses. But I didn't. But it wasn't as brutal as it looked on the video last episode. So calm down, don't worry. So what do you reckon? Correct diagnosis? I think so. I think so. I'm fairly confident of that now. There's been little to no water management behind that wall for the retaining part of it. It's a long old hill that is. It's very steep and we are right at the bottom of it. 
so all that water yes it's coming down the hill uh, next door's garden the elevated garden is completely paved as well which hasn't helped when I took off the copings originally there was soil a uh, clayey uh, silt underneath them where it's all just washed down so yes there is an issue there with the water coming down but I don't think that that's the water that has done the damage to the mortar of the brickwork I'm more than confident that that is poor copings or lack of copings um, no drip groove underneath them and it's just saturating the face of the brickwork and it's just freezing and in the winter as you've just seen there's no sun there at all so when that freezes it's frozen all day and then of course all night and then all day so that, that could have three or four days maybe even longer of just being completely frozen um, and if we get another beast from the east even longer so that's what I think the issue is there and that's what needs rectifying so are the bricks for where it's situated I'm not convinced that those bricks are an absolute no-no yes if they're properly retaining ground because they'll always be wet but they aren't retaining anything there it's just, it's basically a cladding as I've said with a cavity so I don't think that it's necessarily a massive no-no for those bricks in this environment geographically yes they're the wrong ones I admit but overall across the board no, I think with proper water management, i.e. copings, keeping them as dry as possible in a different environment, again geographically, um, I think I think they're all right. So don't go worrying too much if, if that's what you've got in your garden. I, I, you, you might be all right. Um, and again, yeah, I mean, what else can we do? Another thing that I couldn't explain there was the fact that where the elevated garden is that retaining wall there i'm saying i can't excavate because i'm going to go straight under the under the fence an obvious answer for that is we'll bring the wall out a little bit further i can't because they want to maintain the, the passageway down the side of the house to get the bins in and out and everything you, you can't block that off it's a massive waste of space that is if um so i'm sort of confined to the brief there and, and, and of what i can do so I think that engineering bricks with a lot of weak vents to allow the moisture through, build a big 14, sorry, a 13 inch big solid beast of a wall to hold the land back, let the water through, proper coping stone, not a brick on edge. Got to try and keep the face as clean as possible, as, as a, sorry, as dry as possible. Because regardless of what brick it is, the mortar is still going to freeze if it's wet in that kind of environment, so better needs to be done there. Yeah, so it's a page one rewrite, really. Um, would sleepers do it? Would wet rot be an issue? After a bit, they let the water through, maybe. Dry stone walling, that's been, uh, that's been mooted in the comments again. Perfect, let the water all the way through. Is it, would it be strong enough to withhold that ground with the fence up that high? in the wind I don't know I've never done dry stone walling before and I don't think this is the correct job to start on really do you so yeah or again please put it in the comments what you think uh, is, is the best going forward now you know properly uh, all the ins and outs of it um, let me know put it in the comments constructive criticism please uh, if you could it's gonna be nasty don't bother don't bother uh, all do whatever we're not bothered but you're not going to get anywhere if it makes you feel better you know i'll be there for you i'll give you that little hug that you need um if you've all got daddy issues or whatnot i'll be a little daddy figure for a little bit you can take it out on me oh. uh, yeah so last comments we had we had uh, south africa um loads from america norway wolverhampton loads of far out places so keep them coming keep them coming let us know what to do what you think and uh, and hopefully you've learned something from this. I know I have. Maybe having some work done. This might be something to pass on to the builders. They might know, to be fair to them. But, yeah, hopefully this is going to be a bit of a learning point for everybody. So don't forget to like and subscribe. There are plenty more videos that you can go back and look at from ours. And there's plenty to come. We are starting a extension on Monday. So all that's to come. And, yeah, appreciate your time. And thanks a lot. Take care.